I found her outside, and she was like alive, but looked really bad. So I bring her in, and bought some worms and mealworms and all kinds of stuff, and she's she's just thriving. Oh, I was talking to them. I'm getting interviewed. I'm gonna be a movie star. You wanna get in the movie with me? Uh, no. <laughs> Come on, let's do something silly. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give her, if she's so hungry, I'll just chop it up and give her some more. You gonna be our mascot spirit? Yeah. A golden girl mascot? Yeah. Our executive director and Otis in our day shelter that we were seeing a large influx of older women. <laughs> and they would band together and sit around this table. And uh, that's where we got the name from, was the Golden Girls, just seeing all these women banding together. Well, we already know who I am. I'm Betty White. <laughs> who are you, Valerie? Uh, I was more like Blanche. You're not like no, you're not. You can't get in here unless you're 50 or older. So it's for old ladies. <laughs> well, at least you have your teeth. <laughs> no. The Golden Girls Shelter is a transitional housing shelter for women over 50 experiencing homelessness. It's kind of set up like an apartment, and it's co-living co with seven other women. Senior women are a population of people experiencing homelessness that are often overlooked. So Golden Girls is the only shelter that I've heard of that is addressing the unique needs of aging women. And those are very different than um, the needs of women, you know, who might be in their 20s or 30s experiencing homelessness. So how was your weekend? Mm -hmm. It was good. We, we, we didn't kill each other. I just get around like you. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> oh, I did have something good happen. My oldest daughter called me. <laughs> People of older age tend to be on fixed income, so they're using their pensions or their retirement or they might be on social security. And as housing costs increase, those fixed incomes don't increase. And so we're finding more and more people um, of, of advanced age losing their homes. Well, Miss Kevin, how was your weekend? Good. I went and saw a friend for a little bit. And just, uh, <laughs> oh, and then Jan did call me about that trailer on Friday. How did that I'll, go? She up the rent. Oh, wait, 50, I don't know how she can read it to 1150. Oh, we'll rent 1150. It's not including the utilities or anything, so I don't, yeah. I don't know what no. that's. I'm well, not afraid of it. Then what would you be raising again, you know? Yeah. I don't know. I'm sorry, because you yeah. really like that place. I did, yeah. So well, I'm just going to start looking. I'm going to. Okay. Yeah, but we've been finding some other stuff on some other sites, too. Okay, good, good. At Golden Girls, we're completely hands on. Anything that they need, we try and help them with. Getting food stamps, Medicaid, Medicare pursuing social security benefits or disability benefits and help them with their ultimate goal, which is permanent housing. I've really got to get that A and D application filled out and my food stamps. Yeah. At our meetings every week, they ask us what we're working on and help us in any way they can. Right now I'm working on getting disability and of course a place, <laughs> but I'm focused on the disability right now. We also see that people experiencing homelessness are often managing comorbidities or chronic health conditions. And those um, individuals lose their housing um, because they have to pay for their medications. They have to pay for their health care and they can no longer afford to pay for housing. I've been getting referrals from oncology. So can you imagine? Good doing radiation and chemo every day, not having a place to go. Um, also, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, um, COPD, heart issues, diabetes. When you're not really living anywhere, it's kind of hard to keep in touch with doctors, you know, appointments, everything. I mean, I'd been to many doctors and 
kind of just said screw it, you know, until I got here. They've pointed me in the right direction for everything and helped me to get my doctor in Denver and then make sure I get there. I'm getting both knees replaced and I have a bulging disc in my back, so that's why I'm using the walker. But the rheumatoid arthritis doesn't help it, you know. Having to survive day to day, wondering where you're going to sleep, where you're going to get food, you know, whether your healthcare conditions are going to be addressed is extreme stress for individuals, and that stress compounds. And so I think it's critically important that we think about the unique situations that seniors might be in, um, you know, when they become unhoused and how that can contribute both to physical health deterioration but also mental health deterioration. When I was here the first time, it's been about a year and a half, two years ago, I was a nightmare. I was a nightmare to everybody. I wouldn't back down to nothing. I was mad, I was angry, I was everything. I was very depre depressed and down on myself and, you know, just kind of in shock that I was in that situation. I would have never dreamed in a million years, you know. And uh, my soul was broken, you know, because I've been broke before, but dust yourself up and get right up. But this time I just couldn't, I couldn't. I didn't have the will. I really didn't. If I could have found a hole to crawl in, I would have and just been, I was done. <laughs> you know. Every person here, there has to be a story or they wouldn't be here. And a lot of people don't open up, but we do. We open up to each other when we're comfortable with that person. The way that they work together, they'll uh, help each other with rides, they'll take each other grocery shopping. They're, they're all like moms, you know, and they all take care of each other. It's been a blessing here changed my life. <laughs> it's okay, it comes off. It's just a little poop. You I had kids. It was different. No, it's not. That poop is a lot. That's just a little bitty poop. Oh my God. When I didn't think there was any hope. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh, good girl. They gave me hope. I've got to get my drink, and I'm set to go to the river. I'm diving in that sucker, and I'm going to swim for dear life to get back to the edge. <laughs> so if I call you guys and say, I'm in Utah, one of y'all going to have to come get me. <laughs> it's just nice to have friends for the first time in a long, long time. I'm the one that wants to have balls. I said, come on, you can dance on your walker. That thing spins. <laughs> she would love a race car. I would probably wouldn't be fast enough. I'd like to be wrecking <laughs> the people just for fun. Well, you would expect them to just move. Oh, I know you. Fan. Uh, see, and it says, I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> we all love each other here. Lasting friendships for a lifetime. <laughs>